Hello and welcome to a very late daily meal for Sunday the 18th of September 2023. In today's meal news, we start off with takeaways from the game. This is the weekly piece from the South London Press, londonnewsonline.co.uk. Alex Grace's takeaways, Mills 3-0 home defeat to Leeds United. Scoreline not a reflection of the game as deadline day signing produces positive display. Uh, Millwall were beaten 3 0 by Leeds United on Sunday lunchtime. Clinical Whites uh, showed why they are expected to go up with the big guns in the league this season. For Millwall, it's a third defeat in six games this season and a second loss at home in three games. Despite this, there were positives to take from a largely con content performance. What does that mean? From a largely. I don't know what that means. I think they. Um... I think that's some mistake there. Uh, Scoreline, not a true reflection of the game. Uh, the Leeds have a lot of quality, even with the players they have left at the club during the summer. They still started the day with nine players who have played in the Premier League. Added to that, what they were able to bring on from the bench. But with the quality they have, they should be heading back to the Premier League straight away. Anything less will be a huge failure. 3-0 scoreline did not reflect this contest. Millwall, for, love for large parts, kept the Leeds front boys quiet. Uh, the visitors looked very shaky at the start. Ilium uh, Meslier looked a bit fragile with balls into the box. That's their keeper. Uh, and a clash with Tom Bradshaw brought out that fragileness in him. Uh, taking your chances is a massive thing in any football match. You can look at all the stats in the world, uh, but the one that's most important is the goal scored column. Leeds showed how to win the game. They showed how to be clinical. Uh, their three goals came from only three shots on target. You do not need to be brilliant or play fantastic football. To be successful in this league, you simply need to take your chances and lead this just that emphatically. Uh, for Mill, they can take away uh, that they gave a good side a run for their money. But in the end, the quality in the final third shone through. Well, we'll, we'll look at that later uh, when we get to the stats, but you'll see that they created quality chances, which they then put away. Um, so, whereas we just huffed and puffed and had we had about the same amount of shots as Leeds, uh, which you'll see in the, at the end of the video. But our XG was way down because it's just shit. It's our half chances, scuff chances, shots at the keeper. It's just not good. Like they carved us open, passing on twos. They did have a bit of luck with one of them where the guy he fell over onto the ball and and then it went to their player, but. Worrying period, despite all the game, despite all of the above, Mills' form is beginning to be a real worry. The Lions have won just four of their last 15 league games, uh, 15 games in the League and Cup. Uh, a form that saw them drop out of the playoffs last season when it looked all but secured. Uh, the fan base is getting itchy and a bit restless. Uh, Rotherham will become a big game on Wednesday night as the Lions need to get some confidence into their ranks. Uh, Rotherham, like the Lions, have not started brilliantly and they will be coming to the den looking to cash in on a side that are struggling for confidence and in front of goal. Mill had 11 shots against the Yorkshireman, but created not uh, one big chance. Toothless in attack. Uh, that will be the thing worrying Gary out. Most of all, his team are finding it so hard in the final third of the pitch. And that is putting pressure on the rest of the team. Uh, Leeds were able to overrun the Mill midfield on numerous occasions on Sunday lunchtime. And that piled more pressure onto a defence that is not at its strongest. Um, yeah. But here's the thing. Surely, our aim is to get in the playoffs. We just missed out by 45 minutes of, of shit football last season. How are we going to do It doesn't look like we're going to do that. Uh, it looks like we're literally playing a six-point game against Rotherham in a relegation dogfight. This is where we are now. We're literally... Um, Hoping to beat the small teams in the league to stay in the league. Despite all the money that's been spent in the summer, all the players that have come in during the summer. So, what's that about? We spent more money to get worse. How does that work? 
Uh, Longman, a positive, but Fleming benched. Ryan Longman and Alan Campbell arrived on season-long loan deals on deadline day. The former is a very versatile player, and he showed that on Sunday by playing at left wing back. He looked the best player on the pitch from the middle perspective. He got forward and tried to create things going forward, and also uh, forks Meslier into a good save in the first half. His corners also caused problem. Uh, this is very slapdash. His corners also caused problems with his corners. He also caused problems with his corners. For the most part, he looked confident and assured that uh, in the left wing back role. We know that isn't the position he has been brought into play, but it's good to know that it's a good alternative to have there when Joe Bryan starts to move life impacted by injuries. Uh, a surprise absentee from the starting lineup was Zion Fleming. The Dutchman has not had the best of starts for the season following the transfer speculation around his future. However, many in the ground were surprised to see him starting on the bench. He was replaced in the starting 11 by Alan Campbell in that attacking role. Uh, the Luton Loney really struggles having an impact on the game where Mills midfield really struggled. Uh, a chance at coming to get the season going. Uh, Mill are always slow starters to the season. We know this. We've been seeing it every year since they returned to the second tier. We're now in, in the period of the season where games start to come thick and fast. Here we've got three games this week. Uh, Leeds, uh, Rotherham and West Brom and Jail. Uh, Rotherham up, well, I just said, Rotherham up next on Wednesday night before a trip to West Brom. After that, back-to-back -back games against Swansea and Plymouth. Two teams, uh, the former in particular, have really struggled at the start of the season. And that is something we all need to press home on when they are playing at home. Uh, playing games back-to-back -back in a week can have a great effect and build some really positive momentum. If you have a good result uh, generated at the start of the run, obviously a bad result, it can quickly end up in a downward spiral. Gary and his team need to put this result behind them, build on the positives and get that good result. They can stick kick-start their season. We all know what can happen when this club gets on a roll. Um, you're almost, you're almost wishing. Um, well, we'll see. Yeah, so it's rather my home, so we'll see. If we play, if we play the formation that Gary Ryan wants to play, you almost wish that we lose, because he needs to understand that the shit formation doesn't work, and he's not going to do that until we get a r really bad result, and it, it's really bad on him. And he needs to do a bit of self-preservation society and, and uh, just change the thing that he doesn't want to change. Because if you don't, it's, there's going to be bad consequences for yourself. Um, you're almost... So you either wish that he changes the formation from the get-go and rotates the pack because obviously we've got three games in a week. Or if he doesn't, that... The result is a bad one, and he's asked, he forced, he's forced to change it for the rest of the season, which is what happened last season, where we started with a shit formation. He changed it after it got really bad, and then we, oh my god, we started, we started winning. When you play a formation that the players want to play, wow, the players actually play well, and then they can, uh, they get the results, and then we had two players that scored an amazing amount of goals, which we haven't had for quite a while. Um, but hey, what can you do? So here we go. We've got one post-match comment from Gary Rowett. I'm guessing because the game was on a Sunday um, that they're probably going to be a bit late coming through or they might not bother coming through at all. Because obviously we have to go again. We have to go preview in tomorrow's video. We'll be previewing the, the game on Wednesday. So Gary Rowett assesses Ryan Longman and Alan Campbell's performances after the pair make their full debuts for Millwall. Uh, this is from the Southern News, the Club UK. Uh, both were signed on deadline day within hours of one another. Uh, Gary Rout said he saw good moments as he analysed the full debuts of Ryan Longman and Anna Gamble against Leeds United. The pair were signed on deadline day and both made substitute appearances in the game away at Birmingham earlier this month. And they both started yesterday as Longman came in at left wing back as Millwall battled injuries across their back line while Alan Campbell surprisingly played in the hole instead of Zion Fleming. Uh, Longman on loan from Hull City and Campbell on loan from Luton Town were both eventually subbed off in the second half during a 3 0 defeat. Uh, Rowett said, Yeah, I thought they both uh, haven't had much game time, and uh, that was a challenge. I had it 60 minutes. I knew they wouldn't get through to 90, so I suppose at that point you'd have the decision to take them off or do it another 10 minutes later. I thought uh, Longy's played uh, at left wing back a lot for Hull, so some people might have been maybe felt. He was out of position, but actually, that's a position he's played a lot. And I thought he looked pretty comfortable. And Alan's the same. He hasn't played a lot this season. He hasn't played loads of minutes pre-season. 
to probably take a bit of time to get up to speed. I thought Casper and Alan at times, good moments first half. I thought Longy uh, had some good moments, uh, Brooke the same. So again, I don't want to see it saying I'm really pleased with the performance because we lost 3-0. But I thought there were some encouraging moments with it. What we've got to do is not make the mistakes and create some bigger chances in the game. Uh, yeah, as you'll see later, like I said, bigger chances. We didn't have the big chances. Leeds created their goals and finished their goals. Uh, so we're going to move on to this story and then we're going to move on to stats. So uh, this is the Lone Watch feature because obviously um, being done on a Sunday. Because um, I guess the guy's going to have Monday off. Uh, Carl Smith earns Man of the Match Award on Lone debut. Uh, yeah. Um, Incredible stuff. Uh, Abdul Abdul Malik and Carl Smith both made appearances for Willstone last weekend. The former played the opening seven with three minutes of a goalless draw at home to Altrincham, while Smith produced a man of the match performance in his 88 minutes on the field. Like literally, he he was voted man of the match by the sponsors. So, what more can you do? I mean, that's incredible. Um, Abdul Malik had the chance to open his Willstone account, but fired just wide of the post with an attempt. Elsewhere, Chinokli played the full game. Has probably moved into the Vanarama National League playoff places, courtesy of a comfortable 3 0 victory over Oldham Athletic. Whilst Alex Mitchell was in the Lincoln City side, he drew 1 1 at home to Carlisle United in Skybet League 2. Uh, Joe Wright was a substitute goalkeeper in Salford City's nil to uh, Friday night defeat to Notts County, with Nana Boateng missing Woking's impressive 2 0 success away at Hartlepool United. And here are the games. There's some games on Tuesday night uh, in the National League. Uh, Dorkin versus Wilson, Dagenham and Redford versus Bromley. So there you go. Uh, now moving on to the stats. Here we go from this game yesterday. So you can see here, um, you look on the, the right hand side, top performers, top rated players are all um, Leeds United players and their, their goalkeeper, see the second best player according to this website who scored .com. Um, but you can see in the other uh, categories, total shots, the ta amount of tackles, the amount of dribbles, it's, there's a lot of middle players there. So, um, so Millwall were poor at finishing. We had no significant strengths. Uh, Leeds were effective creating goal scoring opportunities for through balls. Were effective for creating goal scoring opportunities for counter attacks. And were strong at finishing. Uh, attack through the middle. Yes, attack through the middle. That is, um, we've seen it in pre season against Charlton. We've seen it at Reading. We've seen it at Leeds. Teams run through the middle of us. We have no, we have nothing to, to counter that. We have nothing to counter that. For some reason, we're going down the wings, but we're not crossing. We don't have a target man to cross balls into, so but we're still going down the wings for some reason. I don't know what's going on. It's uh, a bit of a shit show to be honest. The tactics are all over the place. Uh, so here we go. Look, the attempts: twelve to fourteen, twelve to Mill, fourteen to Leeds, uh, ten to seven open play, two to four set piece, zero to three counter attack. And that is a conversion rate for Leeds of 21%, which is horrific. That is so bad. Um, that is the kind of levels you get in an FA Cup game between a Premier League team and a non-league team. 20% conversion rate. Um, and you've got to think, what's that about? Is that the goalkeeper? Is that the goalkeeper? Um, so, like I said, they're 12 to 14 shots, right? So we go here. So our 12 shots garnered an XG of 0 0.4. Their 14 shots garnered an XG of 2.3. So we're having shots that are shit. They're not clinical. They're not clear cut. Because the way we attack, we allow the teams, we can't. We're not attacking on the break. We're not. Um, it's literally. If 
He's pumping long balls up, and then the rest of the team have to get up. Um, it's running down the wings, and then they get a chance to. It's not quick. It's not quick enough. It's not quick enough. You see how quickly Leeds United counter attacks. You got Jade Cooper running backwards. It's just. <sighs> it's horrific to watch. Um, so let's scroll down. So we were mostly going down our left hand side. Well, no wonder Brian Longman looked good if everything was going down that side. But they were also going down that on their left hand side. Uh, shot directions, shot zones. So half of our shots were in the in the box, half were outside of the box. For Leeds, 14 were in the six yard box. 14% action zones. Player positions. So there you go. Look at that. 24 and 7 for Leeds. Taking advantage of that massive gap where we've got Billy Mitchell on his own. And now overloading the middle of the park. Because we're because we're slow, slow, so slow going up the pitch, so slow going forward. And you see it. The other, you see it. As soon as teams break, they, the players can't get back quickly enough. They're not quick enough. Um. Uh. Yeah. You see, you see look at Bart. Bart's position. His average position in that game was on the D. Because Leeds were just sitting back. Because they know we're not going to break them down. So here are the match events. Goal on 15 minutes. The changes it at the obligatory 65 minute mark. As they always are. And you can see. Straight after that. They made some changes. They counted. I think they counted our changes. Gary Rat was saying like like how oh, he was going for it, he was going for it. He kept the same formation. He just switched out different players. It's not like he changed the formation and played a more attacking formation. He just switched out the same players. Um and you can see seven minutes later, Daniel James who came on, sets up, he gives an assist for the goal. Um they score again, then they make their changes to see out the game uh, at the end of the, uh, the substitutions to see out the game. Um, so here we go. You can see here if you look at the top left, top top right, the club badges: six point one six for Mill, seven point one zero for Leeds. That's nearly a whole point. That is a massive difference in quality. Um, that is massive in in a championship game. It should be closer than that. You can see here. So obviously we've got Millwall's lowest rated players: five point four with Bukowski. He had three shots on target and three goals, so obviously that lot looks good for him. Obviously, there's what not really blaming for him, but he, at times him coming out and scrambling around, falling over, um, it didn't look good. It didn't look good at all. Um, then we've got Billy Mitchell, five point seven. Uh, yeah, just generally everyone's a bit shit in their ratings except for Long Man. Was he? Everything was going down that side. Um, so if we go down and see who did what, so 12 to 14 shots. So here you can see Bradshaw with two, Longman with three. Uh, Perot had three shots, scored two goals. Possession 47 to 52. Pass success 74 to 77. Alan Campbell 94%. Interesting how many passes he actually had because of got sucked off. Dribbles 11 to 6. Yeah, Norton Cuffey 5. Aerials 1 17 to 30. Pumping the ball long to Wee Man, Nisbet, and Bradshaw. And Rondon and Stukic are just lapping it up and Ireland as well. Like the aerial jewels, like it's not happening, is it? 
tackle 16 to 14. So Ryan Leonard doing tackling. Obviously with Leeds coming down that left hand side. And if but Leeds coming down that left hand side, how come Norton Cuffey hasn't doing it? Tackling there. Did he leave Ryan Leonard exposed a bit? Uh, corners eight to nine. These are players who won the corners. Uh, dispossessed six to seven. It's having the ball taken off for you, yeah. Norton Cuffey, yeah. Times. He was just playing kick and rush. He kicked it forward and run that run at it. Even though there's a Leeds player right there and he just kicked it to five yards in front of him. Tried to run onto it, but bro, there's a Leeds player right there. It's not like you kicked it down the line and then went for a sprint. You like literally just kicked it five yards, just run towards it. Very bizarre. Um he's what he's doing. Um now, uh I forgot to bring this up, but we'll bring it up now. Viscord.com player stats. Uh So here we go. The ratings. Longman 7.45. Despite only being on the pitch for 72 minutes. Cooper 6.59. Ryland 6.56. You can see massive drop off there. Nearly a whole point difference between the highest rated mill player and the second rate highest rated mill player. And everyone else is way down there. Although. Look at this, we've got George Savile on the pitch for, what, 10 minutes or so? I've got 6.22 rating, number 6 in the chart. We've got the, the subs of Amaku and Essay, 8 and 9. And the players who started the game, we've got subbed off. Way down the list, Alan Campbell, Kevin Nisbet, Billy Mitchell. And why is that important? Because... The players that started the game had more game time on the pitch than the players who didn't. So why should they have a higher, a lower rating than the player that came on? So you see Helen Campbell here. He had 63 minutes on the pitch, got a rating of 5.95. Romain Essay came on in the 63rd minute. He's got a rating of 6.02. So we've got team selection issues here from Gary Rao. Why is he playing Alan Campbell? Should he have dropped Zion Fleming? Should he have started Romain Essay in that role? Why, like I said it in the, the video the other day, why was Brian Longman and Alan Campbell starting? Is it part of their loan deal that they have to play? Very weird. It's what he said in the post-match post thing, I just brought you that they weren't fit enough for the last 90 minutes. Did they know they were going to come off around the 60th minute? Or did he just say, well, did he not tell them? It's one thing to do where you start playing, look, I think you're only going to be a 60 minutes. So run as hard as you can for 60 minutes, don't worry, because uh, I'm going to take you off in 60 minutes. But if you start them and you don't tell them, like, that's going to happen. They'll p try and pace it out and try and make them their uh, energy last until the 90 minutes. Did they know they were coming off in the 60 minute? Was it a possibility or was it guaranteed? Uh, um, so obviously we've got Bart Piotrowski. Although his pass success accuracy is high, 58.3. Uh, I think that's because his kicking is not as long as uh, as it should be. So it was genuinely finding a middle player because Leeds was sitting quite deep. Um, again, Billy Mitchell, Duncan Wormo, the two subs. Which is how it should be. The subs coming on shouldn't have a higher, a higher rating. And they have less time on the pitch. Um, yeah, so 12 shots we had, right? How many were on target? Three, it's atrocious, and I think most of the two of them were straight out of keeper. So, 12 shots, three on target. That's not good at all. Let's just leads. What did leads do? So, they had 14, was it 14 shots? They had three shots on target, they scored from their three shots. That was it. Um, I'm going to guess that the rest of their shots were off target. Because it, uh, Biakovsky didn't have a save to make. Um, so let's cycle through some of this stuff. Uh, great. It hasn't loaded, so I'm not really bothered. I'm going to fuck around. So in terms of tackles, we've got Ryan, uh, Ryan Leonard, two Ryans. 
Lennon with five, Longman with three, and Casper with Nor two. Uh, Idomi Maku came on as a sub, got two two tackles. Interceptions, Murray Wallace with three. The clearances, Jake Cooper with seven, Ryan Longman with three. Block shots, two from Jake Cooper. Uh, it's just a bit shit, isn't it? It's just incredibly shit. Um, most passes for Millwall. Ryan Leonard and Murray Wallace, Jake Cooper. Passing accuracy. So there, so you've got Alan Campbell with 16 passes and he had 93 accuracy. So in 63 minutes of football, he only had 16 passes. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at this. This was a team selection issue from Gary Rowe. Why did he start Alan Campbell? So Alan Campbell played, started, played 63 minutes. Romain said came on in 63 minutes. Romain had 19 passes. In, this, in less time than Alan Campbell had 16. Like, what are we doing here, bruv? Look, 89% accuracy still. How is he not starting? How is... How the fuck are you going to not start Romain Essay? Start a guy who you've admitted is not fit. And he's on loan. So I've I'm, I'm, got to think there's some kind of deal in the loan that he has to play a certain number of games. What the fuck are we doing here, bruv? What are we doing here? Ah, Jesus fucking Christ, man. Uh, so here we go. We're moving on to this. Uh, this is from fbref.com. Um, it's uh, more stats. It's got the XG here, 2.3 to Leeds, 0.4 mil, as we've already seen, with our 12 shots and their 14. Um, this was a supposed formation, which is a bit um, bizarre. I don't think it was much really like that, to be honest. Um, so here we go. Um, so we had 265 passes, they had 307. Uh, we had three shots on target, they had, they had three shots on target, and said, but that's so what 25% of our shots were on target, 21% of theirs were on target. They scored 100%, they saved 100% of their shots on target. And we go down here, you can see the fouls that were given. 30 or fouls um, not awarded but awarded against you. 13 fouls by Mill, uh, 9 by Leeds, 8 to 9 corners, 18 to 16 crosses, 488, 533, 38 touches, um, 16 to 14 tackles, 9 to 6 interceptions. All the numbers are pretty similar except for when you get to aerials 1 and clearances. So 17 to 29 aerial was one, 15 to 26 clearances. Um, they had one offside, 5 to 7 goal kicks, 26 to 22 throw ins, 80 to 58 long balls. Um, so there you go. And here are the numbers we can see here. Um, as we've just seen. Who had the expected goals for Millwall of the 0.5? Well, it's, it's jumped up to 0.5 now. Though. Up, up there, they said it was 0.4. So you've got Jane Cooper in 0.1, Alan Campbell in 0.1, Ryan Longman in 0.1, Tom Bradshaw in 0.1. Uh, shot creating actions. Who was creating their, the chances? Casper uh, Denor, 6. And then Tom Bradshaw with three. But Ryan Longman, only two. So for all the huffing and puffing down the wings, you're not really doing anything, are you? But Norton Cuffey with two. The shot creating actions are still coming from Casper Denor and Tom Bradshaw. Um, and to show you this, the aerial duels, you can see one lost, one lost. So. 17 won, 29 lost, that's 37% win rate. Um, and you can see, look at this Tom Bradshaw, 1 and 7, 
two and five. Kevin Nisbet, twenty-eight percent. Let's keep pumping long balls up to the little men up front. Makes no fucking sense. Well, let's bomb down the wings and put crosses in to the little men in in the area. It makes no fucking sense. Billy Mitchell, zero and four. Well, that's not good, is it? So here we get short passing, medium passing, long passing. So here we go. Who's who's doing all these long balls to the little men up front? That ain't working. Obviously the goalkeeper, but he's actually finding a middle player for some reason. Eleven and twenty. Um, but you see Ryan Leonard, twenty attempted, only five completed. Ryan Longman, nine and three. So, Brooke Norton Cuffey, long balls, three attempted, zero completed. Where's Casper Denor? The Casper Denor, short balls, hundred percent, eleven eleven, medium, six and seven. 85% accuracy. Long ball, 1 and 2, 50%. So what we got here? Progressive passes, 6. PPI, I don't know what that is. Passes into penalty area. 2 passes into the penalty area. So Ryan Long Longman with 2. Casper uh, Denor with 1. Romain Essay. Look at Rom Let's have a look at Romain Essay. So 4, four 5 short passes. 11 11 medium, 2 and 4 long balls. KP, what's KP mean? Key passes, 2. Passes into the final third, 5. This is a guy who came on in the 63rd minute, and he's got numbers that are, are as good as, if not better, than any other player on that pitch. Probably comparable with Casper de Nord. Remain essay. Like how how is he not starting? Uh. So he, these are the types of passes live dead balls. So players taking their dead ball situations. And Ryan Leonard, uh, Mario Wallace, uh, Ryan Longman. Passes from free kicks, through balls. We didn't have a single through ball in the whole team. Switches, passes that travel more than 40 yards of the width of the pitch. Two of those. Crosses, 18 crosses. To who? To the little men up front. Ryan Long and 10 of them. And then that, that's basically it. Everyone else is not much. Uh, Throw-ins taken. Who took the throw-ins? Ryan Leonard, Barry Wallace, and Brock Norton Cuffey took a few. Um, corner kicks. In-swinging from Ryan Longman. What does STR mean? Straight corners. Oh, straight. No, straight corners. Romain Essie took a corner. One corner. In-swing. So outcomes. What does this mean? Um, passes completed. Offsides, blocks. Defensive actions. Nothing really standing out there, possession wise. Okay, touches. Which is in the defensive penalty area. So, touches in the attacking penalty area. Tom Bradshaw with nine. Touches in the attacking third. Ryan Long, Tom Bradshaw, Norton Cuffey, Ryan Leonard. No good day for Adamo Maku in terms of dribbling past people. Attempted five, only successful in one.
but here you can see so carries total distance carry Brock Norman Cuffey had 254 yards Ryan Longman 213 bombing down the wings to cross balls in to the little men in front we can't get up and hit it like <laughs> What are, what, are, what are these shit tactics, bro? What are we doing here? What are we fucking doing here? Progressive carrying distance. Taking the ball towards the opponent's goal. It's kind of a sad day when the, high, well, the highest rated player in that is Murray Wallace, 87 yards. Progressive carries towards the opponent's To pull towards the opponent's uh, penalty area. 87 yards. The leading player is Murray Wallace. Uh, uh, receiving. Passes received. Progressive passes received. So there you go. That's Pick, pick your way through that. Find out. See, see if anything I missed. Uh, Anything stands out for you? FBref.com. And here's the goalkeeper stats. Not looking good. Shots on target against three. Goals against three. No saves. Not a single save. Save presently zero. Post shot XG is 2.6. So about right. Uh, launched uh, long balls. 11 uh, completed from 20 attempts. That's 55%. Um, passes 19. So this isn't goal kicks, no throws, uh, 84 of those were launched long, an average length of 53.1 yards. The goal kicks, there were 5 goal kicks, 80% of them were launched long, and an average length of 49.8. Uh, crosses, 14 crosses from Leeds into the penalty area, the goalkeeper didn't stop any of them. So. Uh, sweeper keeper, no. O OPA, defensive actions outside the penalty area, zero. Average distance from the goal from the goal um, from the goal line, yeah, thirteen yards. Um, just general shit, wasn't it? If we compare that to Leeds United goalkeeper, Meslier, the French lad, shots on target against free, saves free, hundred percent. But the XG on those are only zero point three. And his passing wasn't all that. And here is the list of all the shots. Not ma not that many shots in the game. The list isn't that many. If we switch it to just Millwall shots. Here we go. Here they are. And all of these shots were only the three that had the XG because they are the ones that were on target. Longman in 30 minutes. Tom Bradshaw in the 46th minute. Cooper in the 52nd minute. It's just, just a bit shit, isn't it? Just very, very shit. If we compare that to Leeds, yeah. So there you go. It's not looking good, is it? Not looking good at all. Um, and it doesn't. It's, it's not that. Oh, we were playing Leeds and they were really good. We're not looking very good. Yeah, it's not working for us. The tactics don't work. The formation doesn't work. Why are you playing players that are not good as the players that are coming off the bench? What the fuck are we doing here? There's so many things wrong that you would think. It's no wonder that people are calling for Garrett to be sacked. Because with so many different things being wrong, there's an easy way to fix that. Get rid, get rid of the guy who's doing all these things wrong. Like, what is he doing? It's utterly bizarre. Utterly, utterly. Utterly bizarre things going on that make no sense. Um, and like I said, in this day and age, where we've got the internet, where we've got things like this, fbref.com, we can see the stats for ourselves. We can see fans, like generally, all the time, fans that go to every game, they watch it. They would say things and they would see things, and you thought, you didn't really get it. But when you look at the stats, you say, oh, yeah, they got that, they're, they're right. That's true. What they're saying is true. This player isn't all that. 
you don't really get it, but they they understand, they see it. And then you've got to think not only that, but the Mill fans going to the games. They're like they they used to play football. They they're, they're involved in Sunday football with their kids. They they might be coaches for the football team. They simple things like leaving a player up front uh, on a when you're defending a corner. Things like that. They think people are noticing things like that. What, what the hell's going on? This is just really bizarre. Really really bizarre. Makes literally no sense. Anyway, uh, we move on to Wednesday, and on that note, thank you for watching, and goodbye.